What's going on guys? My name is Mark Wagner and today I'm going to be talking about email marketing. Now email marketing is an easy way to get 5-10% extra revenue without spending any money on advertising. It's super important for bigger stores so let's hop right into the video and get into the value. Now I know that MailChimp has recently stopped working with Shopify, which has caused a lot of people to stop using email marketing. Now I highly recommend that you check out Klaviyo or really any other e-commerce focused email marketing app. Personally, I use Klaviyo and with Klaviyo, there's two different types of emails really. One of these is campaigns, which are basically what you think of when you think of email marketing. So that's just going to be you typing up an email and then sending it out to your list. The other types of emails that there are are flows and flows are basically a sequence of emails that get sent to a customer whenever they do something. So for example, if a customer abandons their checkout, then your flow would automatically send out a couple emails to encourage them to check out. This video is going to be split up into two parts. First, we're going to talk about campaigns and how you can use those effectively. And then we're going to be talking about flows and how you can use those effectively. So one type of campaign that I send is value emails. And basically, these are just designed to um, really remind customers that you exist and really just get them thinking about your company, which can obviously lead to them going on your website and buying something. So with a niche store, you're going to have a huge advantage sending value emails because obviously the people that buy from you or whose emails are on your list are going to be interested in that niche so really all you have to do is you know find a news article on google for that niche and then you can really just copy it and then paste it in your email now you do need to give credit to the person whose article you're copying but um 99 of the time you're going to be fine just copying an article now, the only thing is you got to make sure that you're not copying a blog post from another e-commerce store because obviously that can take away from your traffic. So I usually try to send at least two of these per month. And personally, I try to alternate between value emails and sales emails, which we'll get into next. So at the end of every value email, I always add something that's like, thanks for reading. You can use this promo code to take like 20% off everything on our website. And then I add, you know, a button to go to my website. Now value emails aren't directly designed to get immediate sales. It's just designed to build a relationship with your customer and get them thinking about your company. The next type of email campaign we're gonna be talking about is sales emails. Now these are pretty self-explanatory and basically all they are is an email designed to get customers to your website. Now this can be something like a big sale that you're having or giving customers a discount code or promoting a new product that you're launching. Any of that stuff is fine. Now the one thing that you do need to be careful with with sales emails is that you don't overdo it because if you send customers too many of these then A they're just going to unsubscribe from you and B it's not building a good image for your company. You never want to be the company that gives out all their products for super cheap because it doesn't reflect that you have good quality products. Now one thing I will do with sales emails, especially on very special occasions, is I'll like lead up to the big event. So for example, if I'm having a big Black Friday sale, then I'm gonna be emailing customers like one or two weeks in advance and letting them know that I'm gonna have a big Black Friday sale. And then you can email them again even a couple days before and remind them that you're having a big Black Friday sale. Now one thing you do need to make sure that you do with sales emails is if you're promoting a certain product, like for example, these shoes are 50% off today, then you wanna exclude the previous buyers of those shoes because you don't wanna like email someone and say these shoes are 50% off when they purchased them yesterday for full price. Just a couple tips about email marketing. Number one, your title is going to be the most important thing for your email. And I know that's crazy that a couple words are gonna be more important than the whole thing, but those couple words are gonna decide whether customers actually choose to click on your email. And even if you have the most beautiful like email ever, you know, if customers don't actually click on it and don't read your email, then it's pointless. 
I always put emojis in my headlines in order to catch customers' eyes. A lot of companies don't do this so it can really stand out when they're looking through their inbox. One thing I almost always try to do is to create kind of like a mystery suspense thing in the headline and then I hype up that mystery in the preview text. So basically what that means is if you're saying this sale will change your life and then your preview text says something like this sale is the most amazing thing that our company has ever done and if you don't read this email then you're going to hate yourself. That's obviously a pretty serious example but at the same time you're not exactly explaining what the email is about so people are curious and they want to click on it. Now one thing I would recommend with email marketing is that you're not overly salesy because these are the people that are already interested in your brand and really what you need to do is grow your brand image with email marketing. Also I would not recommend that you spam customers unless it's a really special occasion like Black Friday then I wouldn't recommend sending customers more than one email every two days. Okay so now we're going to be talking about the flows and if you don't remember where that is it's basically just a sequence of automated emails that go out to your customers whenever they do something. So the first flow that we're going to be talking about is the welcome series flow which you definitely need to have. Basically a welcome series is just whenever an email is added to your list. So you definitely need to split purchasers and non-purchasers at least for the first email. So for my welcome email I always like to say hey thanks for joining you know this is what we're all about and then if the customer hasn't purchased anything then I'll offer them like a 15 to a 25 percent discount in order to you know get them back on my website. So the next email I send to my welcome series is a value email and I send it to everyone regardless of if they purchased or not. So I actually paid someone to set up my flows for me and um, they actually use a Instagram weekly spotlight which I think was really smart and basically it's just a bunch of niche accounts obviously in my niche. They're really cool and um, it's you know it's just recommending the customers check them out. So the third email is only to the non-purchasers and basically it just reminds them of their discount code and I say that this is going to expire in like two days or something like that. The fourth email is sent to purchasers and non-purchasers and basically it's just a list of why people buy from us. You know for example we offer 30 day returns or free shipping worldwide or just whatever your company does. The fifth email is just to remind purchasers of the discount that they have available. And personally I only send this to the people that didn't open um, number three but obviously you can send it to people that have opened number three. Now personally I send my welcome series emails every day but you can really do it whenever you want. The only flow where time is really essential is for the abandoned checkout flow. Okay so getting into the abandoned checkout flow my first email is basically just going to remind them um, you know about their order and I'm going to send that out 15 minutes after they abandon their cart. And basically it's just designed to let customers know that if they had any issues or you know any questions that they can just reply to this email and I'm there and that just helps build trust and obviously if they have any questions um, you can get those answered and hopefully they can complete their checkout. Now the next email in this flow is basically just saying that the product that they want to order is selling out soon and we really can't guarantee it's going to be there if they don't order it now. The third email that I send gives customers like a 15 or a 20% discount if they complete their checkout. Now the fourth email in my abandoned checkout sequence is kind of designed to be clickbait a little bit and basically it's just called smoking hot order confirmation and when customers see that they'll be like hey I didn't order something. So they'll look at the email and be like oh well I, it doesn't say I ordered something but I can't get 20% off if I do. So the fifth email in that sequence is basically just why our customers order from us and it helps build trust and really just give customers a reason to complete their checkout. Okay so the last email in my sequence is just saying that this is their last chance ever to complete their checkout and obviously it's really not because my products don't run out of stock and customers can order them whenever. But um, if you want to say like the sale is ending soon or we literally have like five left in stock I mean you can feel free to. Obviously this is all up to your testing and I'm just showing you what I personally do. Okay so the last flow that we're going to be talking about is the post purchase upsell. 
So this is pretty simple. Honestly, I know I could do a lot more with my post purchase, but um, basically the first email is just thank you for your order. And if you'd like to order something else, then here's a discount code. The second email in my post purchase flow is talking about how to use the new product that they just ordered. And this kind of sucks because you do have to write a new email for every single product that you have. But personally, I only have like four different emails for my top winning product. In that email, I also try to work in a couple of like related products that kind of go hand in hand with the one that they ordered and that can just help upsell customers. I also remind them of a discount in this because they can obviously use the discount on their upsell. In the third email, I'm basically just telling customers why they need the upsell and then I'm reminding them of the discount. The only bad part about this flow and the way that I run it is when customers place an order and then they get an email that says they can have a discount, then a lot of times they'll email me and be like, hey, can I just have a discount on my order? And um, a lot of times I'll give it to them, but honestly, I really don't like to because it's not designed to decrease their value, it's designed to increase their value. Another thing that you can do with post-purchase is you can email your customers like after they've already received their order, 30, 35 days, whatever it takes for you. And you can be like, hey, how are you liking your product? If you submit a review, then you can get a fat discount on another one. All right, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully, I was able to provide you with a lot of value and just show you what works for me as far as email marketing goes. Now, I know this is a super important area, and if you do it correctly, then you can really, really boost your revenue for little to no money. Be sure to hit that big red subscribe button on your way out and I'll see you in the next one.